Good morning, everyone. I'm Chunks of Earth, and today's news is that we had a wonderful Science Sunday for all the people that stopped by. I had the amazing 24-mile skydive by Felix Baumgarten blogging <clears throat> live from the website, and a bunch of people got to see that, and I was featured on blog, which is cool. I had a pretty good stream, by the way. I love my C920, and uh, XSplit is working pretty good for me. But I thought to myself just now, when I looked at that control room and all those people, those scientists working together in all different disciplines, and the guy whose record Felix was going to beat was his best guy. It was his go-to man. He was relying on him. That's the ultimate trust, isn't it? Your life is in his hands, and you're going to top him. This, this is what my America used to be. People working together for the common goal. None of those people got paid. It was for science. It was for this country. It was for each other. It was teamwork. It was success. And they were happy. They were emotionally invested. And they saw results from the fruition of their labor. That's my America. Not the hate and the division and the you're wrong and, and you're on your own and you're one of the 47% or the 1% or the 99% or the 27% or the millions that are... You know, look what happens when people work together. Okay, so go Felix Baumgarten and you are an inspiration and your team is an inspiration to us all. Seriously, I mean it does show how... That's one example where private industry does come to bring about great things. The other thing I want to mention is that it's not always that way and Red Bull couldn't afford to invest that much money into this project by having their name on it and sponsoring it if they weren't overcharging you for their shitty product. Um, money doesn't fall out of the sky. You paid for that, which is good. Thank you. Thank you for chipping in to that wonderful space mission. But profits come from somewhere. It comes from their products. They're not scraping the bottom to sell you that stuff for two, three dollars. I've never drank the stuff. I don't know how much it costs, but I know it's expensive. I know there's a lot of INEs in it, in the organic chemistry, as dangerous stuff. But we'll talk about that another time. Maybe on Science Sunday, we'll talk about organic chemistry. Would love to. Okay, so I got this flyer, this little postcard thingy in the mail from Mitt Romney's campaign. And I'm looking at it, and I'll show you. Republicans believe we can do better. Really? Well, wasn't the Republicans, weren't the Republicans responsible for this stuff? I mean, and what kind of new plans do they have to fix everything? Let's see. On day one, the Republicans will implement their plan to strengthen the middle class and create more jobs with more take-home pay. How are they going to do that? That sounds like a great idea. Number one, promoting energy independence and increasing access to domestic energy resources. That must mean solar, right? And wind and tidal energy and a biodiesel, right? That, that's what that means? No, it doesn't. It means drill fucking baby drill. It means fracking. It means natural gas exploration. It means opening up uh, public lands and on your property to install the Keystone Pipeline. It means arresting you for blocking other corporations, other nations' corporations' interest for the, for the sake of big oil, who spent a lot of money on this campaign. Where do they get that money from? Profits. Record profits in the oil and gas industry. So what do they want to do? Oh, and by the way, gas is still going to go up. You can guarantee that. Okay. Next step. Providing us with skills to succeed with great schools, quality teachers, and job training programs. You mean like in Florida where they cut $1.3 billion out of the budget and fired 8,500 teachers? Is, is that how we create a great education? By uh, promoting Amendment 8 here in Florida, which takes your tax money and gives it to religious schools where there's no oversight, no accountability, no consequences, and no curriculum guide? It's to teach whatever the hell they want and you're going to pay for it even though they don't pay taxes? Is that how we get a great education? Is it like in Louisiana? Is it like Mississippi, who's number 50 in their GOP state on education? I mean, wh wh where are you going to get these quality teachers from when you're removing all access to higher education and you're punishing people for taking science classes? There are professors now that are making $10,000 a year because they're only teaching two courses. They've got PhDs and they're associate professors. There's no more tenure and they can't afford to live. And because there's, there's more marketing and more business classes, because that's where the money's at, lying to people. And the science is falling to the wayside. 
but you're going to get great teachers. Right. Sure you are. Great plan. Cut money. Success. Opening America's markets to the world and curtailing unfair trade practices of countries like China. You mean like when China comes in and tries to buy the wind farm over in Oregon, which is right next to a security interest that Obama finally did something and blocked it? You mean like China buying up all these uh, real estate markets in California? Uh, do you mean like China being in Detroit and building cars for America? Building cars for Honda, Toyota, Detroit. China is building cars in Detroit now because we brought them in. Is that going to curtail their business sense, their corporate interest? We ship so much crap in from China. So much crap. Needless crap. We get drywall with arsenic in it. Uh, asbestos, I'm sorry, not arsenic. We get lead paint in our toys, but we're going to curtail China. Try to buy anything in this country that isn't made in China. Shoes, belts, hats, dresses. Try and buy anything. I mean, most of the clothes here are made in either Indonesia, Vietnam, Mexico, uh, Malaysia, or China. I mean, how are we curtailing anything? Cutting the deficit and immediately reducing non-security discretionary spending by 5%. You mean by cutting the spending that it would have taken the people in Libya, the ambassador, to be protected, but the GOP cut that funding by 300 and something million dollars? Uh, you mean that kind of cutting non-security spending? We're going to increase the deficit by increasing defense spending and we're going to cut non-security spending. What's left? I mean, what, what, the, what the hell is left? And when, when, when you hear things like, what I, what I really love about these, these Republicans is, is the, well both parties, but the Republicans are so vague, so absolutely vague about what they're saying, it's like a horoscope. They tell you, we're going to cut regulations to promote small business. Well, what regulations are you going to cut? Because there's a lot of them. Depending on what business you are, there's a different regulations that, that make sure that you follow the rules in order to not put other people in danger. You don't destroy the environment, you don't destroy the air, you don't destroy the land, you don't destroy the water. These are what regulations are for. We're going to cut regulations. Oh, and we're going to get rid of the EPA. Why the fuck would you want to get rid of the EPA when those are the ones that are controlling you cocksucking greedy bastards from destroying everything? That's why they're there. If we could trust you to do the right thing, you wouldn't need oversight. You wouldn't need regulations. But the government put them there for a reason. Uh, we're not getting rid of those. Sorry, not for your greed to create jobs. And the jobs that they are creating, the wait for jobs is over. The jobs they are creating is fast food industry. McDonald's is opening up Taco Bell, Wendy's. Uh, small restaurants, corporate restaurants are opening up. I got a Chick fil A that just opened up down the street. Lines around the block. It, it just amazes me. There, there, there are so, so many things that are wrong with the way they talk to you that nobody quite. Oh, well, he must, he must want to cut the regulations I don't like. And he must want to cut things in education that I don't want, like science. Oh, that's a good thing. You just, just fit your little mold right into whatever they say, and you're happy. And then when they don't do it, like, well, they're getting around to it. Um, there's a bill that's going through Arizona. I don't know if it passed yet, but it's, it's going through Florida as well, the Tea Party capital, and one of the Tea Party capitals. And it's going to, one of the restaurants that are part of this corporation is Outback. And what they want to do is be, between the ages of 16 and 18, when you're allowed to work, anybody over 18 employee, they want to cut the wages by $3 an hour. So $7.65 goes down to $4.65 an hour. What do you think about that? Do you want you, your food cooked and served by someone making $4.65 an hour? And what about the jobs for the people that you know, need extra money to live. They won't get those jobs. They'll be back out on the street. They'll be on welfare. They'll be on food stamps. How is that cutting the deficit? So you're putting more people out of work to pay people below minimum wage. That's a Republican idea. In addition, they're promoting tipped wage earners, like waitresses, waiters, servers, bus people, barbacks, to cut their wages by $2 an hour. So the 465 becomes 265. I mean, they're nickel and diming everybody. But meanwhile, the people at the top, the ones that really need to take the pay cut, the greedy, useless people that are up there fucking the rest of us, nothing happens to them. They're making million dollar bonuses, and you're cutting 80 bucks out of somebody's paycheck. 
you're insane. You're insane if you vote for the GOP. You're absolutely insane. At least this GOP. Now, moving on, I got my ballot. My absentee ballot. You can get it. You still can get it. Okay. Uh, general ballot. So, if we go through this, it's, it's three pages. Now, and this is what's important. Look how many presidential candidates there are. President and vice president. There's a bunch of them. Okay? Now, I'm in a swing state. So, while I appreciate, I mean, I'm a big Green Party fan, but, but while I appreciate what we're trying to do here is get, get new people in, I can't afford to take any chances with the president and vice president. There's too much too much to lose here. So I'm going to be forced to go with the Democratic Party, at least at this time. But you have senators here. It's very important. We have, this is a good sign, is that we have two non-party affiliated senators, people running for the Senate. Now, I'm a fan of Bill Nelson, so I'm, I'm going to vote for him. But it's good. This is, this is what we need, more non-party affiliates in there. But we need more name recognition. We need to see them. So they gotta they gotta get out there more, which they need support. So you're spending millions of dollars for these assholes that are already entrenched by the corporations to tell you what how bad the other guy is. But there's really good people out there that want to make a difference that you never hear about. It's very important to pay attention to the rest of the ballot. We have representatives. There's one non-party affiliation, but I like I like my my representative. Um, and the other thing is the judicial court. We got judges, and if you're in a Tea Party state like I am. They're going to try and get rid of everything that isn't logical, that isn't about the people. So I'm going to keep all the judges in there because they were there before the Tea Party got there. Um, let's see. State attorney. One of these guys. We got another non-party affiliate. Okay. Senator. No. Uh, state representative. Tax collector. Running unopposed. She's a Democrat, so I'm not worried. I met her. She's a nice lady. Justice of the Supreme Court. I'm keeping all of them. Justice District Court of Appeal. I'm keeping that guy or woman guy. Um, Soil and Water Conservation District. You got to look these people up. You don't just vote by party. You got to see what the hell they stood for, what they voted for. Okay, on the back, we have our constitutional amendments. One, two, three on that one. Four on this one. Five on this one. Six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I'm voting no on all of them. Because the Tea Party is about screwing you. They want smaller government. They want higher taxes to give to the churches. They are the Taliban, in my opinion. And last, we have the question about slot machines and paramutuals to get extra income and economic development property tax exemptions for new ex businesses and expansions for existing businesses. It's very important you pay attention to these these extra things, not just who's running for president, but the big things, the, the really big things. So, I hope that, uh, ooh, I hope that I entertained you, I hope that I informed you, and I'm going to keep complaining about this crap until the election is over, and then we'll move on. Uh, and then if I have something else to talk about, I will. But Science Sunday was fantastic. I'm going to do another one. I'll probably do another show on blog here and there this week, I think. We'll see what happens. But uh, definitely, definitely get involved. we, we got to start in, the, in these other people. If you don't like what's going on, get rid of them. Tell your friends. Anyway, I'm Chunks of Earth. So are you. Peace, love, Chunks of Earth. May the chunks be with you. I will talk to you very, very soon. Comments, suggestions, insults below. Thank you.